Hello, religion thinkers. There are many things which religions have in common, but there are some things which religions don't have in common, some things which very much divide them. Today, let's look at the example of the soul or the self. Not every religion or philosophy out there affirms this. Now, in the Western tradition, as we understand it, we tend to think in terms of a soul or a self. René Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. I'm producing these thoughts. There must be a distinct me, an ego, a self, which is producing these thoughts. Long before him, Plato or Aristotle also thought that there was an eternal soul, which was responsible for our acting and our behaving. Like a musical instrument inside of us, there had to be something playing that instrument, something directing our action. So many sources in Western philosophy and thought affirm the idea of a soul or a self, but not everyone agrees with that. Now let's take a very opposite example and go to India. Now after Alexander failed to conquer India, there were some Greek kingdoms left after. And one of those Greek kings, King Melinda, had a dialogue with a Buddhist monk named Nagasana. And Nagasana told Melinda that there was no permanent soul, no permanent self. And this was an idea which Melinda rejected and could not accept. Show me the proof of your argument, he said to Nagasana. And so Nagasana took him up on that. What did Nagasana say to prove that there was no eternal soul and no eternal self? Well, he used a very practical analogy. He pointed to the king's chariot. And this illustrated the Buddhist idea of the five aggregates. Like the five aggregates, the chariot had five major components. It had a yoke. It had a platform. It had an axle and wheels. And it had chariot walls. It had five major components that made it up. But the chariot was not a chariot always. It had once been a tree. The tree had been cut down and carved up into wood and made into a chariot. But the chariot would no longer forever be a chariot. It would decay, it would fall apart, and it would be non-chariot. So Nagasana said to Melinda, where is the eternal essence of your chariot? Where does it exist permanently in reality? Nagasana argued, as Buddhists do, that all life is ephemeral, fleeting, and passes through various stages of existence. But there was no permanent soul or self, just as there was no permanent idea of the chariot. And I think this was really impressive to Melinda. It had probably had not occurred to him before. And here we see there are some pretty major differences in world religions and philosophies. Is there an eternal soul or a self? That's one model of thinking. But the Buddhist model would say, no, there's no eternal soul or no eternal self. Now, a more modern way of thinking that we've come to appreciate is looking at neurochemistry and suggesting, are we something like biological robots? Are all the words coming out of my mouth right now speaking to you just neurochemical processes in my brain due to my DNA, a stamp that I can't choose differently? Or can I choose differently? To go back to Descartes' question, I think, therefore, I am. I seem to have choices. This is something which still eludes us at the moment. What is the reality of ourselves? What is the reality of our connection to nature? And there have been some very profound thoughts about it. Let me know what you think in the comments about the relationship of our soul to our bodily self. Please like and subscribe and look forward to the next video.